knows you that well, okay? So the great thing that he tells Nathaniel here is, Nathaniel, uh, you know, there's no deceit in you. There's no trickery, no deception. I mean, you're just you're just a genuine article, man. What you see is what you get, right? Uh, I've been accused of being blatantly honest at times, <laughs> right? And sometimes not with a whole lot of tact, my wife would say, okay? But the bottom line is, is I've always thought that honesty is the best policy even though it hurts, all right? Because it'll do you more good, but I try to use more tact than, than, uh, than I used to. But just, just be honest before Christ. So he says, he told him, he said, listen, under the fig tree I saw you. So it is possible that Nathaniel liked to pray and to meditate on God's word uh, in a nice shady place, which, which that's cool. I mean, I like that idea, right? So, he, so he's under this particular fig tree. And Jesus said that under the fig tree, I saw you while you were there. So uh, under the fig tree was a phrase that rabbis used to describe uh, meditation on scripture. And we can suppose that Nathaniel spent time in prayer and meditating on the scriptures as Jesus told him, I saw you. So Nathaniel hears Jesus say these words. Now, Nathaniel knows, he's, he's like, you know, he asked him, he said, well, well, how do you know me? Because he, he spoke to him by name. He said, you're an Israelite with no deceit. So Nathaniel's like, well, how do you know me? I mean, I haven't met you. How in the world do you know me? So then he realizes something about Jesus is different than any other man. So what does he say to Jesus? He said, you are the son of God. He said, you're the king of Israel. So he realizes that Philip, what Philip told him about the one whom Moses wrote about in the Old Testament, this was the guy. He realized that. He realized that Jesus really was this Messiah that Moses wrote about. So this was a testimony of Nathaniel regarding Jesus. He said that he was the son of God. Now that's to describe the unique relationship to Jesus, uh, to God the Father. And then he said, you're the king of Israel. That is the status of him being the Messiah and the king of God's chosen people. So in two, in, in two simple phrases right here put together, Nathaniel gives this re, just incredible testimony about who Jesus really is. So Nathaniel was amazed by what he had already seen in Jesus. But Jesus told him that there was much more to see. Matter of fact, he said, you'll see even greater things than this. So this promise to see greater things, that continues for believers today, as a matter of fact. Jesus promised Nathaniel a greater sign that he has seen before, even the sign of heaven, heaven opening. <clears throat> so Jesus' announcement of the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man probably connects with the dream that we see uh, of Jacob having in Genesis 28, if y'all remember that story. So where Jacob saw the ladder came from heaven to earth, or from earth to heaven, and the angels ascending and descending upon it. And then Jesus said that he basically was that ladder. He was the link between heaven and earth. He was the link between sinful man and holy God. So when Nathaniel came to understand that Jesus was a mediator between God and man, uh, it would be even a greater sign for him. So that's one of the things that we need to remember as believers as well, that the Son of Man, uh, Jesus Christ himself, is our mediator. He is the connection between us and God. Uh, as a matter of fact, the greatest and, and probably the most, the, probably the boldest statement that Jesus makes in Scripture is in John 14, 6. Y'all know what that says, right? I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So the bottom line is, is that he is our connection to the Heavenly Father. He is the only way. Notice he said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, not a way, a truth, and a life. Because that would mean there's another way, right? So he is specifically the way. So the idea behind the phrase, the son of man, is the perfect man or the ideal man or even the common man. So instead, it was in a reference, and I don't know if y'all been with us any on Wednesday nights, but we've been walking through the book of Daniel. But when you look in the book of Daniel, chapter 7 and 13 and 14, where the king of glory who comes to judge the world, he is called the son of man. 
several times. So Jesus used this title a lot, many times in his day. So think about it. It was a it was a a messianic, a messianic excuse me title, free from any kind of political or national sediment at all. In other words, he wasn't connecting himself to anyone else. So when a Jewish person in a time uh, in a time heard the word king or the word Christ, they often thought of a political or military savior. And we know that that's what the nation of Israel thought they were going to get when the Messiah came or when the Savior showed up and, and victoriously marched into the city of Jerusalem. They thought he was going to overtake them. They thought he was going to come in and take charge, uh, but they had a different mindset of a king than what showed up. So Jesus emphasized another term instead of that political military type term, and he called himself the Son of Man. So this points us to Christ's conception of himself as a heavenly origin and as the possessor of heavenly glory. Uh, at one and the same time, it points us to the lowliness of his suffering for men. So think about this. This section of John that we read this morning shows four ways of the coming of Jesus. Andrew came to Jesus because of the preaching of John. He heard the words of John uh, as he preached. So Andrew came to Jesus through the preaching of John. Peter came to Jesus because of the witness of his brother. Andrew went and got him and brought him to him. Philip came to Jesus as a result of a direct call that Jesus called to his life. Nathaniel came to Jesus as uh, he overcame his personal uh, opinions by a personal encounter with Jesus Christ. So these four different ways in witnessing and testimonies to identify Jesus as the true Messiah. So how much more does a testimony does anyone need? When we think about John the Baptist, he testified that Jesus is eternal, that he was the man uniquely anointed with the Holy Spirit, that he was the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, and that Jesus was a unique Son of God. And as we continue going through the book of, of uh, John, you're going to see that, Jesus, that uh, John continues to point to the deity of Christ, and that he is the Messiah, that he is the Christ. Okay? Andrew testified that Jesus was the Messiah. Philip testified that Jesus was the one prophesied by the Old Testament. And Nathaniel testified that Jesus was the Son of God and the King of Israel. All of these pointing to the fact that Jesus indeed is the Messiah. That's who he is. He is the Christ. He is the anointed one of God. So, notice the last part I had here is you. You. So with knowing what you know from this particular part of John chapter 1, you have to do like some personal inventory on your own. You have to ask yourself, okay, so who is Jesus to me? Is he the Messiah? Is he the Savior? Is he like some, what some people will call, well, he was just a, he was a great prophet. He was a good teacher in the New Testament day. Uh, you know, he was, he was a, a great man. He, he did a lot of miracles, all right? He, he did a lot of good stuff for a lot of hurting people. But I'm telling you, there's folks out there that don't believe that he was God in the flesh. Lots of them. The bottom line is, is that you have to believe this. Now, if you don't believe that, it's going to be hard for you to introduce somebody to him. And by the way, that's one of the main purposes that God has us here for. Did you know that did you know that the one thing you're not going to get to do when you get to heaven is to witness for Christ? That's why we're here. I often stop and think sometimes, you know, in the condition that our world is in, how come God has not just, you know, I mean, I think about Sodom and Gomorrah and, and all the, the, the things that happened before the flood and the condition of the world, and I think, Man, our world is so messed up right now. I mean, it, it's like a termite in a yo-yo. It's so messed up. <laughs> but the bottom line is this. Why, why hasn't God just said, you know what? I'm done, okay? It, it's time for my people to come home. I'm done, Amen. right? <laughs> and how come we haven't left here yet? Amen. More people Amen. need to be saved. We're the last hope for the world, y'all. Yeah, right. We're it. We're it. Mm. And if you're not solid on this, if you're not solid on this, then we're no hope. We're no hope. We're the last hope for the world, guys. We're the only ones. 
Christians are the only ones that are giving out the true gospel. Yeah. We're the only ones that are telling the world that Jesus is God in the flesh, that he's Emmanuel, that he is indeed the Messiah. We're the only ones that are going out and sharing that. And if we don't share it, there's no hope for the world. There's no hope for the world. There's a reason that we have the Great Commission. Okay, Notice the word commission. It's a co-mission. You're not on mission by yourself. We're on mission with Jesus. So Jesus goes with us when we go and share the gospel with someone. Jesus goes with us when we do ministry. Jesus goes with us when we witness. Jesus goes with us when we go do community impact and show the love of God. We're on a co-mission. But what did he tell us to do? Make disciples. He said, go and make disciples. He didn't say, if you feel like it. It's not the great suggestion. It's the great commission. <laughs> he said, if you feel like it, do it. He didn't say that. He said, go and make disciples. But we have to be firm on our foundation before we can bring anybody to Christ. Right. So that's the question for today. And I don't know personally where you know where all of y'all are. I don't know personally where all of y'all are in your hearts and in your mind when it comes to Christ. But I got a I got a pretty good feeling y'all are okay. All right. Now, if you're not okay, talk to me after class. I'd like to tell you how to feel. <laughs> but the bottom line is is that Andrew was solid on who Jesus was. <coughs> Philip was solid on who Jesus was. And Nathaniel was solid on who Jesus was. And they had an encounter with him. And if you've had an encounter with Jesus Christ, then you know, without a shadow of a doubt, who he really is. He really is the Messiah. He is the Christ. So, why would we not be telling the world? We're beggars telling other beggars where to get bread. We got the greatest news on the face of the planet. And there's a lot of people today, there's a lot of people today that will depart this world that have never heard the name of Jesus. Never heard the word, the name of Jesus. You would think, man, we live in a technolo technological age. I mean, you know, you can, you can talk to somebody on the other side of the world now, you know, on one of these. You just call them up, right? And, you know, you can get on social media and you can share Christ around the world. There's still people who have not heard the word Jesus Christ. It's up to us, guys. It's up to us. Is our testimony going to be just as strong? That's the, that's the question. Is it going to be just as strong? And if it is, there's people out there that need us to tell them about Jesus. Well, that's all I got for you today. I don't know. How do you, I don't know how y'all end all the class or whatever. Prayer. Pray. You just pray and let you go. Pray. Okay. Well, yeah. Let us go. Talk. Okay, Pharaoh, I'll let my people go. Anyway. <laughs> so before you leave, you got about you got about ten minutes here, a good ten minutes before you have to go over to worship. But uh, before you leave today, uh, make sure that you y'all eat all these donuts over here yeah. that we brought. Uh, I'd hate to see all these fat people sitting in here. <laughs> By the way, these are fat free donuts. Yeah, right. <laughs> They didn't charge you for the fat. They charge free. Charge for the free. <laughs> Make sure that you have one of those. I, I had mine. I had a bottle of cream. <laughs> yeah, I can afford it, so I'm good. <laughs> All right, let me pray, guys. It's, it's been a joy to be with you this morning. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hopefully you understood everything that I was able yes. to share. Absolutely. With you. Yes. Hopefully I challenged you. Yes. yes. I mean, you did, we're at the you Christmas did season. You did good. We're at the Christmas mm -hmm. season, and, and people focus more on yeah. church and the things of Christ and, mm -hmm. and those sort of things at Christmas and Easter. Mm -hmm. yes. The lost world even yes. focus on it more at that time. Mm -hmm. That's why they call them priesters. <laughs> that, that, that's when they focus more on the things of God. So we have open opportunity right now. So more than ever uh, to do that. And we live in we live in one of the greatest times in all of history right now to be able to share Jesus. So let's just make sure that it's not about just coming to church on Sunday. It's not about just going out and serving here and doing this and doing that. All those things are great. But if we don't tell people the hope that lies within us, then we're really not living up to what God wants us to do. Amen. Lord, I thank you for today. And I thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to be here with this class, Lord, and with these fine people. And Lord, I pray that 
that you will help us to be bold, just, just as bold as Andrew was, Lord, to be able to go and, and, and just personally invite people to meet Jesus. Lord, that you would make us as bold as Philip was, Lord, when it, when it came to just being surrendered to you and just following Christ, Lord. I mean, he immediately followed you, Jesus. And Lord, just, just allowed himself to be used by you in great and mighty ways. And Lord, even for Nathaniel with his, with his negative attitude, about uh, where the Lord came from, Lord, you still, you still showed him that, that you are the true one Messiah, Lord, and he believed. Well, God, I pray that our testimony would be just as strong, that we'd be just as solid on the fact that you are indeed the Son of God, that you are indeed God in the flesh, that you are indeed the Christ. And Lord, that we would be so excited about the fact that we're saved by the Christ, that, that by the Messiah, that we know you personally, God, that we would go out and share with others, Lord, and draw them to you as well. And Lord, no better time than right now during this Christmas season as people celebrate the birth of our Savior, uh, that we can do that. But Lord, I pray that you help us, Lord, to do that. Lord, help us to be passionate about sharing Jesus with others. Father, it's the one thing we're not going to get to do in heaven, but it's the most important thing we can do right now. So, Lord, I pray that you would just give us a great day as we go into your service and worship you today. I pray, God, that your Holy Spirit would be uh, just overwhelmingly uh, in, in our presence today, God, so that, that we could experience, God. We don't want to just show up for church. We want to experience what you have for us, God. So I pray that we experience your power and your presence today in a whole new way. Father, I pray you bless these folks, Lord. I pray that you will be with those, Lord, that we've talked about this morning, Lord, that have... Uh, come down with illnesses, uh, Lord, especially for Tim and Louise and, yeah. uh, and the Widdens and, and uh, the other and uh, Don Farley and those. Lord, I pray, God, that you just bring healing, God, miraculous healing to their bodies very, very soon. Uh, Lord, and for any other reason, for anybody's out today, God, I pray that you would just bring them back uh, safe, sound, and healthy, Lord, next week. Lord, we love you. We thank you for being with us today, God. Thank you for loving us. And thank you for allowing us to love you back in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, kiddos.